in this part, I'd like to talk a little bit about wrestling for the nation. Um, now, wrestling comes in many forms. It, in, in the West, we, when we think of wrestling, we think of two kinds. Um, I, I sub in Korea, I suppose, Koreans will think of three. Uh, there is kind of Western, uh, Greco-Roman style wrestling. There is um, Shirim, which now is quite a, a, a popular sport again. Uh, and then there's pro wrestling. Um, in general, what is Im interesting about pro wrestling's history in Korea is that it's, in a sense, very much about uh, history and about um, a sense of um, nostalgia, if you like. And, and why that is, I'll show you through some examples. So this photo is of um, uh, City Hall in the very center of Seoul uh, from the 1950s. And, and you can see that here in, there's this big banner in front of the City Hall advertising Korea Japan pro wrestling match uh, or um, tournament or whatever. Um, wh what is interesting to me about this is that this is the 1950s and, and pro wrestling, uh, it's almost impossible to have been big, but the, the big banner suggests that it was big. And indeed, if you look at reports of wrestling in Korea, um, pro wrestling, you can actually find quite a number of reports on pro wrestling um, and, and people were quite into it. They were really uh, kind of fascinated with pro wrestling. And the reason for that eventually would partly be, not entirely, but partly someone uh, who in Japan made a big career uh, uh, under a Japanese name, Kintaro Oki. Uh, and Kintaro Oki was actually born Kim Il, and you can see him here in this uh, advertisement from uh, 1965. So it's much later, it's about 15 years later. So he finished his career in Japan and then returned to Korea kind of as a hero. And what is fascinating about it is that this is pro wrestling. So it is uh, very, in some ways, very un-Korean. Um, it's not very popular or prominent, um, and yet a lot of people followed it uh, quite passionately, including, apparently, the president himself, Park Chung hee um, And you have to wonder why this was. Why pro wrestling? Um, and you can come up with a range of possible factors for its popularity in Korea. And I guess the most obvious one uh, that, uh, that uh, people can maybe come up with is that pro wrestling means representing, uh, possibly representing the nation and uh, competing with people from all over the world with big, strong bodies. Uh, this is a sport that involves huge people very strong looking people. So this, this is almost like bodybuilding, but then uh, in action. And, and that can be a very powerful image to people when they follow you and when you are representing them, which is also why it was important for Kim Il, uh, Kim Taro Oki, to not reveal his Korean identity when he was performing in Japan. And he learned to do this from his kind of teacher or, or mentor, uh, this man, uh, Rikki Dozan. Rikki Dozan was born in North Korea and he had initially wanted, he was born in 1924 and he had initially wanted to go to Japan um, for, and, and to kind of have a, a career as a sumo wrestler. Um, eventually, though, uh, Riki Dozan um, became interested in perhaps shifting to a different sport, the sport of pro wrestling. Uh, 
and he was very, very successful. He was a huge man, he was very powerful, and he ended up defeating a lot of um, uh, competitors. And while he did this, he kept his uh, Korean identity hidden. So people in Japan generally did not have any um, idea that he wasn't uh, Japanese. And so even after his death in uh, 1963, he, um, a, a few biographies came out and they said that he was actually born in Japan. But that wasn't the case. He was born in Korea. And so at some point during his popularity in Japan, Koreans back in North Korea also started to feel quite proud. And when he died, still he st remained his kind of iconic st status in North Korea for many, many years uh, till today. In South Korea too, when they realized uh, that uh, Riki Dozan was Korean, they started to really cherish his legacy because he was the in a, he was the foremost uh, wrestler or w one of the two, three foremost wrestlers in Japan. And so that kind of success um, made uh, South Koreans quite proud too. And, and of course they were therefore also very uh, fond of his protege, uh, Kim Il. So eventually this, this popularity of pro wrestling kind of simmers, but it doesn't really come to the fore. Uh, in, in North Korea or South Korea. Th and it's odd that for a few decades you don't really see much going on in terms of the history of pro wrestling in Korea on either side of the border. But then suddenly uh, Kim Jong-il in 1995 decided to organize the biggest pro wrestling event in the history of the sport. And he did. So with an, a major investment of something like 20 million US dollars, he organized a massive stadium, filled it with people who didn't know what was going on, and invited some of the biggest names in the sport, including someone from outside the sport, Muhammad Ali, the boxer. And so all these kind of big celebrities came to North Korea, and a lot of journalists came too. They had, um, uh, applications from countless journalists, but roughly half of them were denied a, a kind of entry into the country. And so some other journalists came kind of as tourists. Um, and so this, there was this wonderful kind of semi-quiet event. And you can see what was called collision in Korea. Uh, there's even a documentary about this on YouTube, but you can see the actual kind of report uh, of the event on YouTube as well. So I would recommend you have a look at that. And what you'll notice is, is, is two things. One is the kind of blatant display of U.S. pride. Uh, some of the people really come dressed in a, in a U.S. Uh, an American flag, uh, which is quite uh, odd to see in North Korea. And also, the, the other wonderful thing to, to witness is to see uh, how little the audience uh, appreciates really what is going on. Um, it is an, an art sport. And so uh, for some time, the North Koreans also didn't understand whether it was real or staged. And some people had to tell them that it actually was staged, even though people could get hurt. And so there's this wonderful, um, very strange situation where you have these big names being announced, big people coming on stage and fighting, uh, kind of fake fighting, um, and then leaving dressed in some flag. Uh, and at the same time, this massive stadium filled with people who know when to clap because they're prompted, but don't really know why. So it's, it's quite a, an interesting uh, thing to watch. What is interesting too is that um, still there is, with pro wrestling, uh, 
there is, even though it is of course scripted, there is a great sense of nationalism involved. So you see that in North and South Korea, people cherish the memory of, of uh, Kim Il's golden days, but, and of course of Riki Do-san's golden days, but for, for acting in a sense. <laughs> even though these were still very powerful and very strong athletes capable of kind of fake fighting which involved a lot of injuries nevertheless so you really had to be very powerful to do it but the um the idea that this was real uh, is is kind of challenges the notion perhaps of nationalism because it was real fake fighting in a sense so that i think is quite interesting um, you see um, that in uh, at the time of the event north korea really did cherish uh, Riki dozen who of course had died decades earlier uh, by this commemorative stamp and perhaps they hoped that um, Japanese fans who were watching the, the event um, would, would buy the stamp because um, North Korea has often sold stamps abroad so perhaps this was one way of getting people to buy its stamps. What is also interesting is that they had that little lion there um, because it reminds me a little bit of Hodori uh, the um, mascot of the 1988 Olympics. So even in 1963, going back to South Korea, people were discussing um, Riki Dozan. So it's not like that Riki Dozan would um, kind of uh, be forgotten so easily when it was obvious he was actually living in Japan, which he was at the time, but when he died, um, he, yeah, as, as he, this report shows, people were reporting on it in South Korea. So um, it's an interesting sport and it's an interesting set of characters to consider from the viewpoint of national sports or nationalism in sport. This photo uh, I took a few years ago at the uh, Seoul Museum of History. And, and so again you see that uh, Riki Dozan's legacy is worth at least one window in an, um, a Seoul Museum in the center. So that's quite something. Uh, even though he had a Japanese name during his, the, you know, the height of his career, and he lived and worked in Japan, um, and yet he's cherished. So uh, that that's kind of interesting because there's a lot of people who live in Korea and, and um, will perhaps never be cherished as much. Uh, for their achievements, even though they may even take on a Korean name. Uh, but th there is something about uh, Riki Dozan's kind of Korean heritage that, that made this uh, happen. So s pro wrestling does exist still in, uh, in Korea, but it's not very prominent. And one movie that kind of played with that a little bit and the kind of the the undergroundness of it is this wonderful movie uh, with Song Gang Ho called uh, uh, Ban Chi Guang, uh, kind of uh, the Foul King, uh, which I highly recommend to you uh, and I've shown to my students many times. Um, and here, uh, again, what you, you perhaps get some ideas for other reasons for why people uh, love the sport so much despite it kind of being fake fighting um, and kind of being silly to a degree because of all these ca cartoonesque characters that people have to adopt but there's something very free about it and liberating uh, play fighting you could call it but not so much in a d kind of um, way of uh, saying that it's not real or something but you you the the play in it could be quite uh, 
liberating and, and perhaps that's also what attracted Koreans to it on both sides of the border. So what attracted Koreans about pro wrestling? Although I'm going to um, propose an answer to this question myself, there are many possible answers to give um, and I, I wonder what you yourself think. Uh, if you're familiar with pro wrestling and even if you're not, uh, if you look at the small examples I've provided, is there something about the look, the, the dress, um, the, the kind of the physicality of it that perhaps uh, drives this? So I would argue that it's probably partly because they were physically impressive. And when you have someone representing Korea, you have a very physically impressive person representing Korea, defeating other people. And they could because pro wrestling is not real in that they are rigged, which means that the Korean will sometimes win, even though the other talents or characters or actors or whatever you want to call them, sports people, athletes, um, but may look even bigger and may have much more experience. It's one possible answer. A few keywords. So, Shiram exists in Korea still and is, um, is uh, now, since 1927, is a, is a fairly popular sport. It's recognized as, as part of Korean heritage and <coughs> it, it exists next to, let's say, Greco-Roman wrestling uh, and pro wrestling. Pro wrestling uh, also exists, obviously, but it's, um, it's kind of a niche sport in Korea and it has been ridiculed by the Foul King, among others. Um, but it's certainly uh, interesting to consider what attracts people about it. And partly, I think it's the sense of liber uh, liberation, of play that it involves, the, a bit like cosplay. Um, even though the people involved may not all be as young as cosplayers, the, the average age of cosplayers may also be increasing over time. And so it may be a similar thing with pro wrestlers, that they um, enjoy very much also not being themselves. And that's also what you see in the movie The Foul King. It's, it's an escape. Riki Dozan is certainly a name I would uh, remember, uh, if you can, uh, because of the incredibly unique kind of fandom that he enjoyed. He had Japanese fans, countless of them, but he had North Korean fans, including Kim Jong-il. And he had, in a sense, he had Park Chung-hee in Korea here um, to be one of his fans too. So. Across this region, there, there were fans, uh, despite his North Korean heritage. 